Dear Minister, dear State Secretary, dear Ambassador, dear colleagues, we are back. It's been four, four long years without a PIN conference in person. You know, we did it online, but it's not the same thing. We are delighted to be able to meet you again in person and uh, to exchange on road safety and to discuss on ways to improve road safety in the European Union. Um, before we start, it's important that I point you towards the uh, fire exit. Uh, there is no fire drill planned for uh, today, so unfortunately if you hear uh, a siren, that's a real fire. And uh, in such a case, we ask you to calmly go towards the fire exit. There are two. One is actually the door from where you entered. The other one is here on the right, next to uh, the buffet lunch that you've seen, next to the restrooms, and uh, um, that's the safest a way out together with uh, uh, the main door. Um, today, we will uh, present the findings of uh, the latest PIN report, which will be looking at progress in uh, reducing uh, road deaths and uh, serious injuries in all the PIN countries. We will also award a country for outstanding progress in uh, road safety. But now, um, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Ambassador Per Strand Siastad, who is the Deputy Head of Mission of the Kingdom of Norway to the European Union, and also the Ambassador of Norway to Belgium. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to see you all today. And um, of course, a special welcome to the minister who came, State Secretary, Excellencies, Directors, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as I said, uh, we're very happy to host this event today, this um, annual conference here at Norway House. And uh, I also think that, uh, hope it's okay with the sound here now, yeah? I uh, also think that uh, it is important to show the joint commitment to the importance of road safety that we all share throughout Europe. Just a bit higher, the mic. Higher, like this, yeah? Yep. To try, to try to control it, it was a bit high previously. Let me first say that uh, the progress made in our country is to improve road safety and to save lives makes us optimistic and hopeful. I hope you all share that sense. However, I think we all acknowledge that there is still much work to be done. More than 20,000 people lost their lives on European roads last year. Many more were injured for life. Better road safety is very important in our joint efforts to provide citizens with a safe and high quality life in Europe. I think we all can agree to that objective. The targets are reducing by 50% the number of killed or seriously injured persons by 2030 is ambitious and requires continued progress in all states. The PIN program the Road Safety Performance Index is important in identifying and promoting best practice to inspire further efforts across the continent. I would like to thank the European Transport Safety Council and the Executive Director for hosting this conference, annual conference here today and for your great contributions to road safety in Europe for many, many years. The ETC 
SC is an important voice and an advocate for better road safety. Your competence and knowledge-based approach serve as important input to national and European road safety policy makers. And this has also been the case for many years. And also it remains so in the future, we trust. One of the key reasons for Norway's progress over the last decade is exactly a knowledge-based and targeted approach to the issue of road safety. A broad range of public authorities and organizations are involved and make important contributions towards our common objective. And I think the key here in being successful is this dialogue and teamwork we have seen in Norway and many other countries alike. We stand stronger together. Finally, I trust that we all leave here today after this annual conference with more knowledge and more inspiration to continue this life-saving work. So with those few words, I wish you the best with the conference. I wish you the best, Executive Director, with your great work. And also, again, a special welcome to the Polish delegation and the minister himself. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear Ambassador, and uh, um, thanks also to Norway for hosting us in this uh, uh, beautiful venue, but also for all that you are doing in road safety. Norway remains a shining example of road safety work in uh, Europe, and uh, uh, we think you are a country that we should all try and imitate as much as possible. Um, now, uh, the PIN project would certainly not be possible without, with, uh, without our partners. And uh, uh, one of these partners has been uh, with us since uh, the very uh, beginning. I'd like to give the floor to Andrew Callis from uh, um, Toyota Motor Europe for some welcoming words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you very much for hosting this, uh, this conference. So, dear uh, road safety community, uh, good afternoon. My name is Andrew Cullis, and I'm the head of sustainability and ESG management at Toyota Motor Europe. And we all have individual commitments in Toyota, and uh, mine is uh, to work together to create a safe, inclusive, and empowering environment for all. And I'm really grateful to be here today to say a few words as part of this welcome for the PIN conference. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all for your efforts and your dedication to improve road safety and, of course, save lives. Now, as Toyota, our global mission is to produce happiness for all, and that simply cannot be achieved if we can't provide safe mobility solutions. And this is why we are constantly working on initiatives to improve traffic safety and also have the ambition to reduce fatalities from traffic collisions to zero in the future. But of course, we can't do this alone. We need the combination of safe products, safe use, and of course, safe infrastructure. And we need partners to work with continuously to improve road safety for all users. And that's why we're privileged to have actually have been a partner for, uh, with ETSC for the last 17 years and have a chance to support this really crucial uh, agenda. At Toyota, we continuously develop technologies. Sorry, I've just gone a little bit too fast there. Um, but at Toyota, we continuously uh, develop uh, priorities and continuously develop those uh, technologies to pursue this goal and make these advanced safety systems standard across our model range. Now, we recently uh, launched the BZ4X. Sorry, I was going the wrong way. Uh, we recently launched the, the, the BZ4X, um, and that's our battery electric vehicle, which includes our latest generation of safety sense systems, which we call Toyota Teammate. 
with uh, preventative safety systems that really have been developed to provide greater functionality and more detailed monitoring of the car's surroundings and, of course, those of other road users. For example, when you're making a left or right turn across the flow of traffic at a busy intersection, this uh, presents its own hazards, not just from oncoming traffic and crossing traffic, but also from pedestrians and cyclists who might be stepping into the road uh, that you're actually turning into. A pedestrian uh, stepping off the curb into the road can promote the driver to swerve, and with our teammate technologies, and in particular our uh, emergency steering assist, this helps avoid the pedestrian uh, not only being hit, but also the car senses where it is in lane to try and keep the car in its own lane. But as we move forward to, uh, from a car to a mobility company as Toyota, our safety philosophy absolutely remains the same. From not only our current vehicle types, but any types of vehicles or mobility solutions that we may develop uh, in the future. And of course, we count on your continued support and collaboration as we continue to develop safe mobility for all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrew. And now we uh, start with uh, uh, presenting the uh, PIN report for uh, um, 2023, which will uh, gently lead us towards the announcement of uh, uh, the country that has, win, that has won the, uh, the PIN award. Now, uh, a few words about the uh, uh, PIN uh, uh, program. It's uh, a program which uh, started uh, back in uh, uh, 2006 with the aim of uh, comparing member states' performance in uh, road safety. And uh, uh, it brings together 32 countries, the 27 members of the European Union, as well as uh, the UK, Switzerland, Norway, Israel and Serbia. And uh, we have one expert from each of these countries to provide data, to provide information on their country, allowing us to compare the different participants to the PIN on the basis of different road safety performance indicators. This is probably the right moment for me also to thank all uh, the PIN panelists, those experts from uh, each of the 32 countries that are helping us with data, but also the members of uh, the steering group providing uh, scientific guidance to the project, and of course the two co-chairs, Heather Ward, Hank Stimpton, and uh, uh, the special uh, um, advisor, Professor uh, um, Richard Olsop. And a uh, big thank also to uh, the ETSC team, those who are writing the reports, organizing the conference, those who are behind the PIN project, and uh, uh, namely um, Jenny Carson and uh, uh, Maria Meinero. And uh, uh, in uh, uh, these last 17 uh, years of uh, the PIN project, we have uh, produced 44 flash reports, and then a countless number of activities, events, and uh, uh, PIN uh, um, conferences. Now, after the introduction about the project, it's time to face again the sad reality. This is the number of uh, uh, people who died in uh, uh, road traffic in the EU in uh, 2022. Unfortunately, it's more than 50 every single day. I say it every year, I'll say it again, it is an unacceptably high number. We should all be ashamed of this figure. There is, however, some uh, uh, positive element in that, insofar as almost 40,000 fewer deaths have been killed, in, uh, have been uh, uh, registered in uh, uh, 2022 uh, compared to the case if uh, deaths had continued at the same levels as uh, in 2012. So in these 10 years, we have uh, managed to save uh, approximately 40,000 deaths.
let's look at uh, the progress over the last years. This is uh, um, showing uh, uh, the uh, progress in uh, the PIN countries between uh, 2021 and 2022. Also, for the countries that could provide this with the change in uh, um, kilometers uh, uh, driven. Right, uh, there has been uh, a 4% increase in uh, the number of uh, deaths compared to 2021, which is actually far from the 6.1%, which uh, would have been 6.1% uh, decrease, which would have been needed if uh, uh, we were to be uh, reaching the um, European target to have the number of road deaths by the end of the decade. And uh, um, best performance were by uh, Slovenia, 25%, and Latvia with a 23% reduction. Uh, you see big increases in uh, Malta and Luxembourg, even though it is important that uh, um, numbers in uh, Malta and Luxembourg are very small, and therefore they are subject to substantial annual um, fluctuations. Uh, also important to note the white histograms for those countries that uh, uh, were um, able to uh, provide uh, numbers of kilometers driven. Well, uh, it's a post-pandemic sign. The number of kilometers driven increased uh, in all countries uh, uh, which uh, were able to provide data. Um, what is important, however, overall to notice in this graph is that too, many, too, too few countries had uh, reductions in uh, uh, the number of road deaths. Out of the 32 countries which are monitored by the PIN uh, program, only 13 registered a decrease and are indicated here in green. Now, let's enlarge a bit uh, the horizon, not any longer one year, not 2021 over 2022, but three years. So progress between 2019, the latest year before uh, the um, COVID pandemic, and 2022. Um, right, for uh, the EU, as an average, there has been uh, a 9% decrease between uh, uh, 2019 and 2022. However, in order to reach the um, 2030 target, well, this decrease should have been almost twice as much. Should not have been 9%, it should have been 17%. Uh, and certainly in these three years, results are clearly still impacted by the restrictions on travels, the restriction of movements, which uh, uh, we had uh, in uh, uh, the first years after the uh, um, COVID pandemic and during uh, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic uh, itself. Um, much longer um, time span, uh, 10 years now, between uh, uh, 2012 and uh, uh, 2022. Uh, you see here uh, the figures for uh, the number of deaths, uh, the curve for uh, uh, the serious injury, and also uh, the uh, EU target uh, with the uh, green um, dotted uh, line. Um, the EU27 um, collectively uh, reduced the number of road deaths by only 22% uh, over the 10-year period. Uh, we've seen a very encouraging start at the beginning of the decade, then uh, a flattening of uh, uh, the curve. Then, of course, uh, there was the big decrease for all the wrong reasons, including uh, uh, the COVID, and then we've seen that uh, uh, in uh, um, the last year, numbers have been increasing, but uh, fortunately not getting to the same level uh, as uh, to uh, the um, pre-pandemic uh, uh, levels. Um, we can also see that um, with uh, a breakdown by uh, PIN countries. Again, we, s we said that already in uh, the EU27, the average reduction 
in the decade was 22%, as opposed to the EU27 target of uh, uh, 50%. Um, only one uh, country, uh, um, Lithuania, managed to overachieve, to reduce by more than uh, 50%. This is uh, actually much better, 60%. Very good reduction from uh, Poland, with 47%, and uh, uh, then too many on yellow and uh, on uh, uh, red. Um, let me now move on to comparison of uh, road mortality between uh, um, countries in the PIN project and uh, in uh, um, the European uh, Union. If we look at the PIN countries, um, actually the road mortality, so the number of deaths per million population, uh, differ by a factor of almost four between the safest country on the one side and the less safe country on uh, the other side. So still far away from a situation whereby you are as safe, uh, irrespective of uh, uh, the country, of the PIN program of, of the European Union, where um, you are traveling to. Again, uh, road mortality, we can look at that with uh, a breakdown by uh, country. Um, average road mortality in uh, Europe is 46 road deaths per million population, and this is down from uh, 54 in uh, um, 2012. Um, some worrying signs in uh, two countries, uh, namely Malta and the Netherlands, where road mortality is higher in uh, uh, 2022 um, compared to uh, 2012. Um, now, in the next uh, slide, uh, we're also going to show an animation of uh, the evolution of road mortality over the last 20 years. And, uh, well, if you manage, try and track your country, otherwise you'll, uh, you'll be able to go and see it also uh, later on the website, but uh, you'll see that the developments have been quite important, even though uh, the job is uh, uh, not um, completely accomplished. We start in 2001. Fascinating, isn't it? We started uh, 20 years ago where uh, we also had countries uh, with a road mortality above 200 deaths per uh, million population. Now there is none which is above 100. So certainly we can look back and uh, uh, partly congratulate ourselves on uh, the progress that has been achieved while at the same time, of course, remembering that a lot of work still needs to be done in order to bring these histograms as much to the left as uh, possible. Oh. Without forgetting the number of serious injuries, of course, uh, the um, European Union has uh, uh, set itself a target to reduced by half over the decade, not only the number of uh, deaths, but also the uh, number of uh, uh, serious injuries, according to uh, the commonly agreed definition, MAIS3+, uh, there, are, there were uh, in 2019, the latest year for which data were available, uh, more than, well, 110,000 uh, seriously injured in uh, uh, the uh, European uh, Union. So, uh, should not forget that uh, while uh, work is uh, needed, of course, in uh, reducing the number of road deaths, also extremely important to also work on uh, um, serious injuries. Now, uh, the PIN, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, targets uh, participating countries. Um, if we're thinking uh, about uh, recommendations for uh, 
national um, policy developments. Uh, um, some of them may seem obvious to you. We keep on repeating them, but we feel that they need to be repeated because uh, obviously we are still far away in all the countries to have a full uh, adoption and implementation of uh, the um, safe system. Uh, funds, road safety needs funding. We cannot expect to improve road safety without dedicated funds for uh, this uh, uh, policy work. Uh, always extremely important to make the choice of measures based on sound evaluation, based on research. We are so proud to say ETSC is a research-based organization and road safety should be based on evaluation, should be based on research um, everywhere. And more and more countries, of course, have uh, um, set targets to uh, reduce by half the number of deaths and serious injuries by 2030. We can still recommend for those uh, uh, who have not done so to please do so as soon as uh, uh, possible. Also, um, recommendations not only for uh, um, the countries, but also for uh, the EU. Based in the EU, we work a lot with the European institutions. Uh, we really welcomed the, uh, um, ident the, the, the work on uh, um, KPIs and uh, we think data collection and setting targets on uh, uh, these KPIs should be fast-tracked and also uh, work as quickly as possible on uh, implementing the EU road safety strategy. The decade goes very quickly and uh, we need to arrive at the end of the decade with measures that can uh, certainly help us in uh, reducing the number of road deaths. And then speed. How can I make a presentation without speed? We love speed. Well, let me qualify that. We love speed when it comes to speed of implementation of measures. We want governments, we want the European Commission, the Parliament, Member States to quickly, to speedily act on road safety. When it comes to speed of vehicles, well, no, we don't like that. And we think that uh, we should not forget that speed remains the biggest contributory factor to uh, road collisions and deaths. And uh, certainly, while a simple recommendation does not solve the issue, it would have been great to have a formal uh, recommendation from uh, the Commission on uh, speed limits on all roads, 10T national roads, also urban areas with many countries, many cities now moving to um, 30K. And, of course, the importance of uh, a road safety agency, uh, which cannot be overestimated. We need work, we need resources, we need an agency that uh, um, can uh, um, work on several areas of road safety, not last the, uh, um, um, for example, uh, uh, autonomous vehicles, automated vehicles, and uh, uh, um, accident collision uh, investigation. Now, that's it from uh, my side. I guess many of you will know already, but we really want to tell you who won the PIN Award this year. So congratulations to Poland, to our uh, Polish colleagues, before inviting them to the stage to collect their uh, well-deserved awards. A few slides uh, on uh, why the steering committee of the PIN project uh, decided to uh, award the country with uh, uh, the PIN. Um, well, first and foremost, an impressive reduction in uh, the number of road deaths between uh, 2012 and 2022, 47% as opposed to the 22% EU average. Also, when it comes to road mortality, 
a very big decrease now bringing the country to 50, which is still a bit above the EU average of 46, so no room for complacency, but still an important reduction over the years. And then, well, again, also some of the reasons that our steering committee gave us for uh, um, awarding Poland, we saw almost half the number of road deaths over the period 2021-2002. Uh, the presence of a long-term national road safety program with uh, a target aligned to the European Union one and to the UN one of uh, uh, reducing deaths by 50% by 2030 and uh, looking at vision zero for uh, the longer term future. A safe road infrastructure program for uh, the period 2021-2024, aiming to improve road safety on national roads by creating safe road infrastructures, and then guidelines and work to the institutions responsible for uh, pedestrian safety and for uh, safe cycling. And last but not least, increasing as much as possible speed enforcement efforts and uh, uh, um, introducing also new regulation and I would like to uh, mention here also, uh, for example, the one on uh, emergency corridor, which was one of uh, um, the latest that uh, was introduced by uh, Poland in uh, 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 the last uh, um, years. So, it's time now to call on the stage the Minister of Infrastructure, Mr. Andrei Adamczyk, and uh, the Secretary of State of the Ministry of Infrastructure, Mr. Rafael Weber, to collect the award. Because it brings with it a heavy responsibility for further work. Ale to z tego wynika, że to wiąże się właśnie z tą odpowiedzialnością, którą panowie ponosicie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I invite the minister to stay on stage for uh, his speech, and uh, then uh, uh, the um, state secretary will be able to talk again. Będziemy także mieli możliwość wysłuchania opinii pana sekretarza stanu. Wielce szanowni państwo, panie panowie. Dear ladies and gentlemen. Jest dla mnie wielkim zaszczytem udział w dzisiejszej konferencji oraz przyjęcie nagrody PIN przyznanej państwu polskiemu za osiągnięcia najlepszych wyników w Europie w poprawie bezpieczeństwa ruchu drogowego w 2022 roku. It is a great honor for me to participate in this conference and so accept the PIN awards given to the Polish state for achieving the best results in Europe in improving the road safety in 2022. Za tę nagrodę bardzo dziękuję, ponieważ jest ona dla nas wielkim wyróżnieniem. I thank you very much for this award as it is an extremely valuable for us. Jest niezwykle cenna. It is extremely valuable, ale także jest inspirująca i e, motywująca do dalszego działania, którym, które ambitne cele znamy. But it's also motivating us to undertake all those efforts to achieve uh, the goals we all know. Odkąd zostałem ministrem infrastruktury prawie 8 lat temu, poprawa bezpieczeństwa na polskich drogach była i jest dla mnie kwestią priorytetową. Since I became Minister of Infrastructure almost, almost eight years ago, improving safety on Polish road has been and still is a priority for me. Cieszę się, że nasze wysiłki idące w tym kierunku nie tylko zostały przez państwa dostrzeżone, ale przede wszystkim przyczyniły się do 
realnej, dobrej zmiany na polskich drogach. I am glad that our efforts have not only been recognized by you, but above all have contributed to a real good change on Polish roads. Przyznana Polsce Nagroda PIN jest dowodem docenienia na arenie międzynarodowej naszych zdecydowanych działań, które już przynoszą widoczne rezultaty. The PIN Award granted to Poland is a proof of the international recognition of our uh, determined efforts, which are already showing visible results. Tak jak tutaj to zostało już powiedziane, ale chciałbym to po raz kolejny podkreślić, że w ciągu ostatnich 10 lat liczba ofiar śmiertelnych na polskich drog drogach spadła o 47%. A w czasie ostatnich sześciu lat o 37%. Uh, as it has already been mentioned, uh, but I would like to strongly emphasize this, that the number of road accident fatalities in Poland has fallen by 47% over the last 10 years and 37% over the last 60 years. Co ważne jest to stały trend spadkowy, zwiększenia natężenia ruchu po zakończeniu okresu pandemii COVID-19 nie wpłynęło na zmianę tego trendu. To dowód na to, że Polski system i zastosowane przez nas rozwiązania przynoszą, przynoszą pożądane efekty. Importantly, this is a steady downward trend, trend. The increase in traffic after the end of the COVID-19 pandemic period has not changed this trend. This proves that the Polish system and the solutions we have applied uh, have been uh, uh, seriously effective. Jeżeli ktoś zapyta, jak to dzieje się w Polsce, to pragnę przybliżyć, że działamy w podstawowych trzech obszarach. If you ask me what kind of activities we have been undertaking in Poland, let me just mention that we carry out three parallel processes. Pierwszy z tych obszarów to inwestycje w infrastrukturę komunikacyjną. And the first process so these are investments in transportation uh, infrastructure. To nowe, nowoczesne trasy dróg szybkiego ruchu o parametrach dróg autostradowych, to setki kilometrów co roku dróg ekspresowych. And so by saying this, I mean construction of hundreds of kilometers of express roads and hundreds of kilometers of motorways and the roads with the standard of motorways. Ale to dzisiaj również niespotykany bez mała na europejską skalę program wspierania samorządów w przebudowie, budowie e, w dróg samorządowych, infrastruktury towarzyszącej, e, ścieżek pieszo-rowerowych, bezpiecznych przejść dla pieszych, doświetlania przejść dla pieszych. To olbrzymi wysiłek finansowy, który jak widać popłaca. And to, this is also a process of supporting of local governments to carry out their processes. And by saying this, I mean supporting them in construction of cycling routes, uh, municipal roads, uh, adding of lightning to uh, the municipal roads. And all these processes have been strongly contributing uh, to the successes of uh, the Polish state. Wśród tych dróg, inwestycji, których wspomniałem, tych dróg o, e, krajowych, to też wielkie projekty, które służą, będą służyły i już w części służą także kierowcom e, poruszającym się tranzytem przez Polskę. To Via Carpatia, to Via Baltica, dzięki której chociażby e, kierowcy państw nadbałtyckich będą mogli bezpiecznie przejeżdżać i już w zasadzie przejeżdżają przez Polskę. And all these investments have been uh, supporting not only the Polish citizens, but also a large number of vehicles and drivers using uh, Polish roads or uh, transiting through our countries. And so uh, with uh, these investments particularly, I mean uh, the Via Carpatia and uh, Via Baltica roads. These have been at least partially commissioned and now uh, multiple drivers from also other member states have been using those roads. Przy tworzeniu i przebudowie dróg coraz intensywniej myślimy bowiem nad jeszcze szerszym zastosowaniem rozwiązań technicznych pozwalających wykluczyć sytuację zagrożenia, aby nowo powstające drogi bez mała wybaczały kierowcom ich błędy popełniane na tej drodze. 
And so when building and reconstructing the roads, we are thinking more and more about technical solutions to eliminate risk situations so that the newly built roads uh, can, in a way, forgive human errors. Similarly, we are continuing uh, to work towards eliminating the dangers associated with crossing of roads and rail, rail routes. Drugim z obszarów naszych działań na rzecz poprawy bezpieczeństwa ruchu drogowego jest edukacja. Nieustannie organizujemy rozmaite akcje edukacyjne, pokazujemy jak tragiczne skutki może mieć nieprawidłowe zachowanie na drodze. Wzbogacamy też system powszechnej edukacji szkolnej treściami z zakresu wychowania komunikacyjnego. The second area of our work to improve road safety is education. Uh, the, we continuously organize various educational campaigns. We demonstrate the tragic consequences of improper behaviors on roads. And we also add the traffic education content to the general school education system. Przypomnę, że w e, ostatnim czasie z przyczyn zupełnie niezawinionych agresja e, Rosji na Ukrainę spowodowała e, wzrost ilości uczestników ruchowego, ruchu drogowego w Polsce którzy do tej pory mieszkali na Ukrainie. And let me just remind you that uh, because of those unprovoked and blameless aggression, Russian aggression over Ukraine, uh, we have now in Poland a significantly larger number of participants uh, traffic who in the past resided in Ukraine. Inne przyzwyczajenia, inne rozwiązania komunikacyjne musiały tutaj zderzyć się z naszym bardzo mocnym programem edukacyjnym w, w wskazywania tutaj naszym przyjaciołom, których wojna niestety, a, którym wojna kazała opuścić granicę Ukrainy. E, musieliśmy tutaj naszym przyjaciołom, e, naszych przyjaciół wesprzeć e, w bezpiecznym znalezieniu się na polskich i europejskich drogach. And so their habits uh, may be from time to time a little bit different. Their behaviors on the roads may from time to time be a little bit different to uh, what we have been applying on the European roads. So that's the reason why we decided to support our Ukrainian friends uh, in seamless adopting to the European Union uh, traffic solutions. Trzecim obszarem działań są zmiany w prawie. I tutaj staramy się, aby legislacja w jak, w jak najlepszy sposób e, określała prawa, ale także i obowiązków wszystkich uczestników ruchu drogowego. The third area of our work is legislation changes. We strive to ensure that legislation defines the rights, but also the duties of all road users in the best possible way. E, w, realizując e, działania oparte o Narodowy Program Bezpieczeństwa Ruchu Drogowego na lata 2021-2030. Zbliżamy się do założonego celu zmniejszenia o połowę liczby ofiar śmiertelnych i ciężko rannych wypadków drogowych na polskich drogach do 2030 roku. By implementing of the National Road Safety Program, we have been undertaking activities uh, to uh, significantly decrease the volume, the number of fatalities and seriously injured persons uh, by uh, 2030. Jednocześnie chcemy kontynuować działania na rzecz całkowitego wyeliminowania ofiar śmiertelnych i ciężko rannych wypadków drogowych do osiągnięcia tak zwanej wizji zero do 2050 roku. And obviously we are also targeting to achieve the vision zero by 2050, which is a total uh, exclusion of uh, uh, fatalities and serious injuries by that, that year. Obecnie osiągnęliśmy cele zakładane na 2027 rok w zakresie redukcji liczby ofiar śmiertelnych, jeże, zaś jeżeli chodzi o liczbę ciężko rannych osób, osiągnęliśmy już cel redukcyjny wyznaczony na 2026 rok. We have now reached the 2027 fatality reduction targets, and in terms of the number of people seriously injured, we have already reached the reduction target set for 2026. E, a to oznacza, że wyznaczone cele są możliwe do osiągnięcia, oczywiście pod warunkiem ciężkiej, e, systematycznej pracy. For us, this proves that the goals set are achievable, provided uh, that wise, thoughtful and effective measures are systematically implemented, and we work really hard. Jednocześnie chciałbym podkreślić, że nie spoczywamy na laurach i będziemy w dalszym ciągu działać, 
żeby jeszcze bardziej poprawić bezpieczeństwo na polskich drogach. And obviously I would like to assure you that absolutely we are not set on laws and we will be hardly working continuously to improve safety on Polish roads. Szanowni Państwo, jeszcze raz pragnę podziękować za to wyjątkowe wyróżnienie. Ladies and gentlemen, let me once more appreciate your granting this exceptional award to the Polish state. Polski sukces w zakresie tak znaczącej redukcji liczby wypadków i ofiar śmiertelnych nie, byłyby, nie byłby możliwy bez pracy i zaangażowania wielu osób, często bezimiennych. And uh, the success of uh, Poland in reducing the, no of the number of accidents and fatalities to such a significant extent would not be possible without the hard involvement of a large number of people, some of them are uh, nameless. Ale nie mogę tutaj nie wskazać personalnie pana ministra Rafała Webera. But absolutely I need to personally mention here, mention here Mr. Minister Rafał Weber. Sekretarza stanu w Ministerstwie Infrastruktury. The Secretary of State in the Ministry of Infrastructure. Dla którego bezpieczeństwo w ruchu drogowym jest priorytetem we wszystkich jego działaniach. For Rafał, the, men, uh, the safety on roads so is top priority in all activity, activities he has undertaken. I nie mogę tutaj też nie wskazać na sekretarza Krajowej Rady Bezpieczeństwa w Ruchu Drogowego, pana dyrektora Konrada Romika, który jest tutaj z nami. I also need to mention Mr. Konrad Romik, uh, the head of uh, the Council of uh, Safety, Road Safety uh, in Poland. So he is also with us here. W przypadku pana dyrektora Muszę z pełną odpowiedzialnością powiedzieć, że to, że bezpieczeństwo drogowe to jego życie, to jego pasja, a to cel wszystkich działań, które zawodowo podejmował i podejmuje. And so the director's passion uh, is safety on the road and this is uh, the core of all the activities he has uh, been undertaking. Bardzo dziękuję całemu zespołowi. Te osoby wymienione przeze mnie, ale cały zespół pasjonatów, cały zespół ludzi, dla których bezpieczeństwo w ruchu drogowym jest absolutnie konieczne. I nie mogę tutaj nie wymienić pana premiera Mateusza Morawieckiego, który nadał nam w ostatnim czasie olbrzymie tempo działań w tym zakresie. And uh, of course, uh, once again, I need to mention that this success uh, is uh, the result of uh, hard work of a large number of uh, other people as well not being here with us. And so I wouldn't uh, be able to leave this stage without mentioning uh, Mr. Prime Minister of the Polish government, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki, who has been continuously uh, triggering uh, us uh, to, uh, to, to work even harder. Niech mi wolno będzie teraz prosić o udzielenie głosu panu ministrowi Rafałowi Weberowi. I will highly, highly appreciate if you allow me to pass the floor to Mr. Rafał Weber. Twórcom sukcesu należy dać możliwości podzielenia się swoją radością, ale przede wszystkim też opowiedzenia, jak to się robi. Uh, so he is the father of the success, and I believe he is the best person to speak uh, about uh, his successes, but also he can share with all of us uh, how to achieve all those goals. Dziękuję bardzo, panie ambasadorze, panie dyrektorze, drogi Antonio, drodzy przyjaciele z Europejskiej Rady Bezpieczeństwa Ruchu Drogowego, kochani współpracownicy, szanowny panie ministrze. Uh, dear Mr. Ambassador, Antonio, director, so, dear friends so, from the European Transport Safety Council, dear friends, thank you very much for uh, being here with us. Bardzo gorąco dziękujemy za przyznanie nam tej nagrody, za przyznanie nagrody PIN Award 2023, traktujemy ją jako drogowego Oscara. Panie ministrze, trzymaliśmy w ręku drogowego Oscara. 
I would like to thank you for this exceptional distinction and awarding to us this award, which we believe is uh, the Road Safety Oscar. Mr. Minister, uh, we had in our hands uh, a Road Safety Oscar. Moja mowa też będzie Oscarowa. Postaram się, aby była krótka. My speech is also going to be la Oscar-like speech. I mean, it's going to be short. Ale chcę bardzo gorąco podziękować. Zresztą uczynił to pan minister Andrzej Adamczyk wszystkim tym, którzy na co dzień kreują bezpieczeństwo w ruchu drogowym na polskich drogach. And I would like to follow Mr. Andrzej Adamczyk with saying thank you to all those of you who have been creating safety on the Polish roads. Sami w pojedynkę takiego sukcesu nie osiągnęliśmy. Każdego dnia na polskich drogach są służby, które dbają o to, aby wszyscy ci, którzy z tej infrastruktury korzystali, zachowywali się w odpowiedni sposób i oczywiście dbali o swoje, ale też innych uczestników ruchu drogowego o bezpieczeństwo. Wszystkim tym z całego serca dziękuję. It is not only two of us, there are plenty of other people working on a daily basis on the Polish roads, helping all those users of the Polish roads to return home safely. And I would like to highly appreciate all these people for their hard work. Dziękuję też mojemu szefowi, panu ministrowi Andrzejowi Adamczykowi, który od blisko ośmiu lat odpowiada bezpośrednio za bezpieczeństwo w ruchu drogowym. Oczywiście od tej strony inwestycyjnej, prawnej, ale też edukacyjnej, kreując działania w tych trzech zakresach. And I would like to say thank you to my boss, Mr. Andrzej Adamczyk, who has been responsible, uh, personally, directly responsible for creating activities in all, all those three areas we have been talking about, uh, investments, law and education. Dla mnie realizacja tej polityki, którą kreuje pan minister, jest nie tylko dużą odpowiedzialnością, ale też ogromną frajdą. Bardzo lubię to robić i cieszę się bardzo, że te nasze wspólne działania są efektywne, przyniosą, przynoszą zamierzone skutki. And so uh, it uh, has been for me a great privilege and pleasure to implement all those activities developed by Mr. Pri by, by Mr. Uh, Minister Adamczyk. It gives me a lot of joy, a lot of fun uh, to work on all these projects together with you. Osiągnięcie tak wyraźnego spadku, szczególnie liczby ofiar wypadków drogowych, nie byłoby możliwe bez skuteczności ministra Andrzeja Adamczyka. Inwestycje w infrastrukturę drogową od wielu, wielu lat są rekordowe. To dziesiątki miliardów euro wydawane na właśnie inwestycje drogowe i to w naszej ocenie jest ta najważniejsza część dbania o bezpieczeństwo w ruchu drogowym. All these decreases in the number of fatalities and accidents and casualties wouldn't be possible without the significant, without significant investments we have been implementing in Poland. These are uh, dozens and dozens of billions of euros we have been in, uh, spending every single year uh, in Poland on uh, investments in uh, the infrastructure. Pan minister wspomniał o tych najważniejszych. Ja natomiast chcę powiedzieć o tych może e, mniej istotnych, ale w zasadzie bardzo istotnych z punktu widzenia bezpieczeństwa w ruchu drogowym mamy ambitny cel doświetlić w sposób profesjonalny, podkreślam w sposób profesjonalny, wszystkie przejścia dla pieszych na drogach krajowych. Uh, Mr. Minister Adamczyk mentioned all those major projects we have been working on, but let me also mention some things which seem uh, to be a little bit smaller in their scope, but they are extremely, extremely uh, important. I mean, one of our goals is uh, to lighten all uh, the zebra crossings on the national roads within the country. Jest to osiągalne, jesteśmy w trakcie realizacji tego projektu. Mam nadzieję, że w najbliższym czasie uda nam się go z powodzeniem zakończyć. This uh, project is ongoing now and uh, it is achievable to complete it finally and, I'm, and I hope that it will be finalized shortly. Mamy też kolejne pomysły, jeżeli chodzi o działania edukacyjne. Jeszcze w tym roku będziemy je realizować. Także mam nadzieję, że te dobre wyniki, jeżeli chodzi o poprawę bezpieczeństwa w ruchu drogowym, które były przez nas osiągane w ostatnich latach, nadal będą poprawiane, że będziemy mieli w Polsce do czynienia z dalszym spadkiem i wypadków drogowych, ale przede wszystkim ofiar śmiertelnych wypadków drogowych. 
And of course, we also have on our minds a uh, quite large number uh, of uh, educational activities, educational uh, projects, and these are also going to be shortly uh, implemented. And by working, working on all these areas, uh, we uh, targeted ourselves uh, to far to decrease the number of accidents, to far to decrease the number of fatalities on the Polish roads, and we hope that this will soon become true. Chcemy, aby wtedy, kiedy Antonio będzie przedstawiał kolejny raport, mapa Polski nie była pomarańczowa, tak jak to dzisiaj, tylko za rok żółta, a za dwa, trzy lata zielona. Najpierw jasno-zielona, a później ciemno-zielona, co będzie oznaczało dynamiczny spadek ofiar wypadków drogowych. And so we want that Antonio, when he's presenting the next uh, uh, annual pro, um, um, uh, report, we, we want, we hope that the map of Poland uh, will be probably next year in yellow, and in the next two or three years, first light green and then black, dark green. Antonio, thank you very much. Bardzo gorąco dziękuję jeszcze raz za nagrodę, za możliwość wystąpienia. Może nie było krótko, chyba się panie ministrze nie nadaje do odbioru Oscarów. Uh, thank you, Antonio, once again uh, for giving the floor to me. Uh, I'm very sorry for not speaking uh, short. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm not the best person uh, to accept awards or Oscars. Yes, um... <laughs> Przepraszam za ten suplement, ale on jest dedykowany przede wszystkim panu ministrowi Rafałowi Weberowi uh, i całemu obszarowi, za który odpowiada, którym się opiekuje. Uh, please forgive me uh, supplementing what has uh, my colleague, um, uh, Mr. Weber, said, as I, I need to add something on uh, what uh, Mr. Weber is responsible for. Jeżeli tylko spełnił się to, o czym mówi, tak szybka zmiana barw na mapie Europy w kolejnych raportach, to deklaruje, że z wielką cierpliwością, ale szczególnie z uznaniem na pewno wysłuchamy godzinnej lub dwugodzinnej mowy. To się opłaca. Uh, what I can declare uh, from myself is that uh, if, it is become, if it becomes true that in the next years the color of uh, Poland on this map will change uh, to yellow, light green and dark green within the next two or three years, I'm more than sure we will be happy to listen to you for, to listen to you for two or three hours yes. as uh, it makes sense to listen to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our common effort of all Polish people. And particularly both of these two passionates on my both sides. So thank you very much, dear Minister, uh, Secretary of State, Director of the National Road Safety Council. Uh, thanks for the presentation. We were very happy to uh, listen to you and uh, uh, I really appreciate it also on the speech, in the speech the lack of complacency, the willingness to move to the dark green to work still and more on road safety. So well done. Thank you very much. Thanks. Very good. Uh, so three years in uh, uh, the new uh, decade, we now have uh, a very high level uh, presentation from uh, uh, the European uh, Commission on uh, where we stand. We need to take stock of the current situation, but also uh, to see what we are um, going to do for uh, the remaining of the uh, decade. I am uh, delighted to uh, welcome Christian Schmidt, who is uh, of course from the European Commission, but most importantly for us is the EU coordinator for ro road safety. So, Christian, the floor is yours. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Antonio, and uh, may I start with warmly congratulating Minister Adamczyk, uh, State Secretary with Weber, and of course thank the Norwegian host, Ambassador Schostad, for hosting. Um, I'm the EU um, Director for Land Transport, but also with a second hat. Uh, as European Road Safety Coordinator. Uh, Antonio, I'm not quite sure what my role is here. Maybe sh I should begin by confirming that Poland deserves fully to receive this uh, award. Otherwise, we take it back. Yeah, otherwise, uh, we should take it back. But, Minister, you deserve this uh, prize. Um, congratulations. It's not every time in politics uh, that uh, you get to change people's lives 
uh, and in this case, you get to save people's lives. And that, of course, um, as a minister, must be uh, uh, of great satisfaction. Let me also, uh, since you touched on Ukraine, recognize I am the coordinator of the Polish Solidarity Lane Corridor, the work that you do together with the Commission um, on Solidarity with Ukraine. Um, and it also touches on road safety, because indeed uh, we have allowed Ukrainian drivers to drive with extended um, driver licenses on European roads. And you host most of the Ukrainian refugees on your national territory. Uh, we work together uh, on the solidarity lanes. We have liberalized together the um, EU-Ukraine road transport agreement uh, so that the borders are open between Ukraine, uh, Poland and the rest of the European Union. Um, so you are fighting on all fronts uh, with us um, and I wanted to um, begin with acknowledging that uh, solidarity. Um, moving to road safety, it is true that um, if you look at uh, the figures, as Antonio has shown them, uh, Poland is above the EU average in terms of fatalities, but I think it's important. Um, uh, uh, my wife is a teacher uh, that grades are given on progress, <laughs> um, and uh, you have made uh, certainly uh, in the previous years the fastest progress um, and I am entirely convinced that next year or the year after, you will be below the EU average in terms of road fatalities uh, per in inhabitant. Um, it takes, uh, Antonio knows this, a combination of efforts to make the progress that you have demonstrated. It is not something you just uh, gain overnight. Um, road safety, uh, the improvements is in the safe system approach, so it requires a combination of efforts. It requires investments in infrastructure. And of course here, as you mentioned, Minister, uh, Poland has done a lot. And of course, as you know here, again, the Commission is by your side and your partner in improving infrastructure in Poland. Then, of course, there is the question um, of driver behavior. Um, and here again, I know from your colleagues working with us uh, in the high-level working group on road safety that Poland has been particularly strong on enforcement uh, to uh, crack down on speeding. And it is necessary. There's no joy in having speed limits if uh, they are not enforced and they are not respected. And I in no way underestimate the political determination and stubbornness that it takes to enforce this policy uh, of enforcement. Uh, because, of course, people don't like to pay fines. Um, and yet, uh, it does save lives. Speed kills, and therefore, uh, you are very strong uh, um, uh, policies on enforcement, uh, I believe, has, uh, has changed uh, uh, a lot. Um, we're working uh, on a road safety package. The Commission has put one uh, at the table of the Council uh, on the 1st of March. Um, and I think a lot of the measures there echoes what Poland has done uh, in terms of um, making enforcement more efficient. Not just, of course, for Polish drivers on Polish roads, but for all drivers on all European roads. Um, those who don't know this, um, if you speed in another member state, uh, you'll get a fine, but if you don't pay it, there's a 40% chance that you'll get away with it because the administrations will never find and then follow up, uh, etc. Please don't spread this secret outside this room. Um, <laughs> the, the European citizens must not know this. And also, we are about to change it. Huh? The Commission has put forward a cross-border enforcement proposal that will uh, end impunity. And again, we have seen in the Polish case, Minister, it works. It works in terms of changing behavior. You speed once, then you realize that somebody's actually monitoring this, you pay a fine, and it's clear that there is a deterrent effect. This has been shown in your case, it's been shown in, in studies across Europe, uh, and therefore enforcement is, is necessary. When we look at the, um, the figures, I'm sure Antonio's uh, 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 report is full of all the details, so uh, I rely on that. But uh, of course, what we now need to address together are the vulnerable groups um, and the high-risk categories. And to be very simplistic, they are the very young, testosterone-filled men <laughs> driving uh, for the first time or in their first years. And then it's the old people <laughs> who uh, are not realizing that uh, the site is not as good as it was, uh, etc. So um, we have put on the table a proposal for 
um, a revision of the driver license directive that will uh, uh, um, put in place a much more uh, targeted uh, measures for accompanied driving for young drivers. And I know that in a number of member states uh, uh, this is already the case. And I would uh, encourage also uh, Poland to uh, rally behind this proposal that uh, young drivers, when they get the right habits from the very beginning of not drinking, uh, uh, no alcohol, um, uh, and not speeding, if they have these right values and habits from the beginning, it will stay with them as they grow older. Uh, and so it's important to have th th that, that rule in place um, of driver disqualification if you uh, exceed alcohol and speed limits in the first two years of your driver license. Uh, and there are many other uh, uh, um, improvements that we can make. Um, and I know that Poland is engaging fully in these discussions, uh, so I, I hope together we will make these uh, uh, improvements at EU level. Let me stop there, um, Minister, um, just to say once again, warm congratulations also on behalf of uh, your colleague and Commissioner uh, Adina Valien. Um, I know she follows this very closely, uh, and in her name I also wish to uh, congratulate Poland on this very well-deserved award. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. I will not let him go, no? <laughs> yes, for shaking the hands, yes. But then I ask Christian to come back because uh, he's kindly accepted to answer questions from the floor. And this is something that the audience like and love to grill the European Commission. So um, there will be a wrong I was microphone not wondered, but <laughs> somewhere. And uh, I see George and please... Uh, uh, Introduce yourselves. We know many people in this room, but uh, name and organization. And question, of course. Hello, I'm uh, George Yanis, professor at the National Technical University of Athens. Um, thanks for this uh, excellent uh, uh, presentation. Just a question, which is uh, quite critical in our days. We improved a lot the safety of cars, mm -hmm. but still a lot about uh, Valham Road users in the cities. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, and the challenge is, what are you going to do for the cities, which is not fully your responsibility, but it is where the, the real problem is. The figures that we have seen today, more than 50% are in the cities. Correct. Uh, just to get the figures right, yes, uh, the um, two areas where we don't see fatalities come down as fast as we want to are um, accidents on rural roads, and then um, in urban areas. I believe, and, and you're also right, uh, secondly, that um, uh, to a large extent, uh, urban infrastructure and how cities organize uh, uh, traffic rules is not EU competence. We leave that to cities uh, to sort out. Um, what I believe is, uh, uh, is something that um, cities can explore um, uh, is speed limits, uh, 30 kilometers by default. Uh, the Commission has decided, yeah, well, I may have you, yeah. the Commission has decided not to, uh, uh, let's say, enforce or um, uh, push cities to do that, because we see that uh, the practice on the ground speaks for itself. The member states are now very clearly experimenting with that, and they have seen the effects are positive. So if this can be done without Brussels uh, stepping on their toes, I think that's, uh, I think that's great. Um, the other thing, of course, is that the pandemic has changed the modes of, um, of mobility, and we see more active uh, uh, mobility modes, uh, e-scooters, uh, walking, increasing in our urban areas. And of course, the Commission is encouraging that via our urban mobility plans um, and sustainable plans um, for that. But I think that in terms of infrastructure, um, we haven't yet adapted to these new uh, active modes of transport. Um, it's very nice to say you want cycling, but if the infrastructure is not suited for it, then it will not increase road safety. And uh, um, I cycle myself to work every day. Uh, a very small part of my uh, road to work is with a dedicated uh, cycling path. Um, and road safety for cyclists is not just painting a line um, on the road. Uh, it's dedicated bicycle lanes. So there I think um, um, a lot more has to be um, done. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to say, of course, is that um, technology will help us also to get to zero uh, for vulnerable road users. Um, I don't believe in 
um, automatic driving and automated cars, but I certainly believe in um, intelligent uh, transport systems and um, uh, warnings for drivers, connected cars, there is a car coming up uh, uh, to your right, etc. communicating between, between vehicles. The technology is there, and what we need is to put in place the systems to harness the, uh, the promise of technology. Um, so this, I think, uh, will help us bring us to zero uh, in, in cities. No silver bullet, um, as always, enforcement uh, is also part of it. Um, um, but yes, uh, uh, I would uh, uh, continue to advocate that cities uh, should, uh, should take the lead on putting in place uh, uh, these policies, and we will assist with legislation as necessary on European level. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we start with Veronica. I didn't, the minister didn't get questions, did he? <laughs> Good afternoon, Veronika Valentová, Transport Research Center, Czech Republic. I would like to ask about uh, working groups, uh, agrees about uh, the groups of uh, vulnerable road users and road markings and traffic signs, what is the progress in these groups? Because for a few months I have no new information. Um, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Um, you are talking, to, uh, talking about the, the EU working group for... EGRIS. Ah, okay, so the risk directive, uh, the recent directive, yeah, okay. Um, it's an area where I'm, we're not uh, advancing as fast uh, as I want to. It's a question of internal resources in my directorate, but uh, uh, the directive is uh, um, under scrutiny for revision, and it is, uh, of course, an area where uh, um, we must learn uh, all the lessons um, and eventually amend the directive in order to set standards for infrastructure uh, that will improve road safety. But uh, we have been working mostly on the road safety package on driver behavior, uh, on driver disqualification and on enforcement. Um, and the infrastructure directive is the next uh, on my list of priorities. Can't do everything at the same time, but thank you for reminding me. Please. Okay. Lukasz Zbrowski, I'm a journalist from Poland writing about road safety. I have one question, simple but hard. We live in one union, European Union. Why we don't have one speed limit for highways for city roads and before city roads and do we will have um, we don't have that because we think member states can decide for themselves um, I, and i think the minister uh, is a good example that uh, uh, decisions are taken on the basis of the local conditions let's also recognize that uh, the physical conditions are not the same in all the 27 member states the quality of the road network is not the same so if you say on a, on, on a highway, say in my own country, Denmark, they're not as well developed uh, and, and large, perhaps, uh, as they are in, let's say, Germany or France. And therefore, to say for, high, for, for Autoroute, it should be this, I think it's, um, yeah, you want it lower. Uh, but again, the objective specificities of the road network is different. Um, what I think we can do is to uh, create a, a typology of, under these conditions, with that infrastructure, the uh, adequate speed is that. Right? Then we are not forcing a straitjacket to the entire network where uh, it's also a question of how congested is the road and all that. So there we have to be a little bit smarter and say, under these conditions, on that kind of road structure, the adequate, but that should not be legislation, I think, that, sh that, that should start with recommendations. Um, and as a road safety coordinator, I would be really happy if member states would be the ones to make the right decisions. We measure the results. Poland has shown that without a straight jacket and unified EU harmonized traffic rules, steps have been taken that have produced results. I think that's what we should do at European level. That's what ETSC is doing. That's what we're doing with the colored. I mean, benchmarking and ranking is sensitive. Yeah? It's about saving lives. If we put at European level a spotlight on those who are red but are becoming 
more green, then I think we, ha we have the right mix of saying we all need to improve. How we do it um, is a matter of EU legislation and local decisions on what makes uh, sense. So no, we don't have unified EU traffic rules, and I'm not about to make a proposal. We should have that. Otherwise, member. <laughs> Okay, three minutes, no, four minutes to coffee break, unless there is one that is extremely burning and quick, we'll stop it here. Yes? No, okay, okay. Very good, no? Okay, uh, well, my briefing says don't forget to thank Christian, how could I? Uh, so thank you very much for uh, uh, your presence. Thank you very much for being here, okay. for answering the questions. And uh, we will... Uh, we will now have uh, uh, a, a photo opportunity session with the um, colleagues from Poland, which will be on this stage. The others can have uh, coffee. We resume at 3 o'clock with two uh, extremely important panels, one on young people, one on fitness to drive, which are obviously both linked to uh, the driving license directive. Thank you very much. See you in half an hour. Thanks. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> That's <laughs> all.